Welcome to the Awesomers.com podcast. If you love to learn, and if you're motivated to expand your mind, and heck, if you desire to break through those traditional paradigms and find your own version of success, you are in the right place. Awesomers around the world are on a journey to improve their lives and the lives of those around them. We believe in paying it forward, and we fundamentally try to live up to the great Zig Ziglar quote, where he said, you can have everything in your life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. It doesn't matter where you came from, it only matters where you're going. My name is Steve Simonson, and I hope you will join me on this awesomer journey. If you're launching a new product manufactured in China, you will need professional, high-resolution, Amazon-ready photographs. Because Simo Global has a team of professionals in China, you will oftentimes receive your listings photographs before your product even leaves the country. This streamlined process will save you the time, money, and energy needed to concentrate on marketing and other creative content strategies before your item is in stock and ready for sale. Visit simoglobal.com to learn more, because a picture should be worth 1,000 keywords. You are listening to Awesomers.com podcast episode number 47, and those numbers are just racking up faster than I can keep track of them, I have to tell you. Uh, for The secret for you is all you have to do is go to awesomers.com slash 47 and you can find relevant show notes and details and things like that. Uh, you can also join the mailing list and I think that's probably a pretty good idea for you because we send you lots of free stuff, uh, videos and, and even processes to help you find your personal why or to help you uh, with your company origin story or to give you some financial overviews 101 and ERP 101 and other things. And it's just drip fed out to you. There's no sales pressure. We're pretty easy going, guys. And I think that it is awesomer, and you should be on that list for sure. Now, today, my special guest is Jay Cali. And I, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, as is my custom. But Jay is such an amazing guy, and I, I really enjoy my time with him. Jay is known as the strength architect. With three fitness facility success stories to his name, he's an Iraq War veteran. Jay has been characterized as a true fitness, nutrition, and mindset empowering powerhouse. Jay is a contributor for Women's Health and Fitness Magazine, as well as Consumer Health Digest, and also Smart Healthy Women. He was also featured on ABC 24's Good Morning Memphis. Jay has been a guest on many top performing webinars, webcasts, and other online training seminars as well. Jay is an American born expat who had moved to Cancun, and he's taken the health, fitness, and nutrition industry by storm since he moved down to Cancun back in 2012. His well-known three-step health and weight loss ideology, which has successfully transformed countless women stuck in the ruts. Uh, they're stuck trying to lose pounds and trying to break through plateaus. He's helped them do that. Jay's mission is to help women specifically create long-lasting, healthy lifestyles within just eight weeks that they can go on and maintain for life. This is a good time to buckle up and get ready. We're going to have a fun time, and Jay's expertise will be well-founded for us all, but especially for women. Hey, welcome back, Awesomers. It's Steve Simonson, and uh, I got good news today. We are joined by Jay Callie. Jay, how are you this morning? What's up, Steve? Man, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, well, you know, I'm always uh, always trying to, uh, as I like to say, unbelievable. I'm doing unbelievable because that covers both ways. <laughs> Even if I'm too busy or having a bad day, it's unbelievable. But most often, I'm having a great day, so it's also unbelievable. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. I love it. So, Jay, I've already read in kind of a bio to the audience, so they kind of have a little background uh, from the big picture. But I always like, in your own words, maybe you could tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, uh, where you are, what you're doing today. Okay, sure. Absolutely, Steve. Well, where I'm at right now, I actually live in Cancun, Mexico. I've lived down here for about six years now. Um, came down here, opened up a couple of gyms, fell out with my partner, sold the gyms, closed all my gyms, and I turned around and took all my business 100% online. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I've been doing the online health and fitness coaching arena for over three years now, and I absolutely love it, man. I absolutely love it. Oh, I, I think that's a great uh, and a classic awesomer type of story where, you know, you, you followed uh, your, yourself and your partner down to Mexico. Uh, uh, you know, what a great place to be. And then the, the retail or the, the land-based side of it didn't uh, work out the way you wanted, whatever. But the online piece, you still are able to capture the freedom there and carry on, yeah? 
Absolutely. I mean, you know, and it was, it was a little difficult because, I mean, I moved to a new country. I mean, I had, I mean, I didn't even speak the language when I moved down here. You know, it was the cool thing is I found someone down here to partner up with. And so, you know, and, and like anything else, you know, sometimes partnerships work, sometimes they don't. And they didn't work out, but it was nice that I actually had, you know, at that point, my, my girlfriend, my fiance, to say, hey, why don't, why don't you look in the online world? You know, you're down here in Mexico, but there's a lot of people that you can help in the States. Why don't you look, move, move your stuff on there? So, I mean, I really have, have her to credit for pushing me into the online world. I love it. Yeah, it's, it is such a flexible and, um, you know, freedom-inducing mechanism to use the, the Internet as a uh, as a mechanism in fact one of our marketing people uh that we work with uh, at empowery there there i think he's out of mexico city right but you know he's an expat and he's just you know chosen to live in mexico city and it's like doesn't matter to us you know and we have other people you know in asia or europe or wherever they are it's just a, such a wonderful thing uh do you when you coach people i'm presuming they're all over the place uh, is that yeah. fair to say Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, and it's actually kind of what's funny is that, you know, you're talking about the freedom for on my side, you know, I give that back to my student is how I look at it. You know, like whenever most of my students come to me, they come to me because they're just absolutely too freaking busy. I mean, and then you have to add on top of it. Okay. So you're telling me I got to work all day. And if you're, if you're moonlighting, right, creating your business on the side, you definitely don't have time. Right. So then you say, okay, well, how am I supposed to go to the gym that's across town? I know it's going to be probably a 15 minute, 20 minute commute, depending on where I live. If I want to work with a trainer, I got to get on his schedule because, you know, he only has so many openings during the day. And more than likely, he's just going to see me and then kick me out as soon as I get in there. Because guess what? He has no one, someone else right behind him that he has to take care of. So now I've got another 15, 20 minute commute back to the house to shower, clean up. It, you know, it, no way, man. No way. Yeah. So to give my students back that freedom where, you know, they have a coach with them anytime they need them. And it's not on me. It's not like, hey, we need to see each other and do Skype video. No, no, no. This is all through an application. So they get to do it on their time, on their progression, and I get to watch. I get to follow. And so I'm watching all the data, watching everything they put in, and I'm just guiding them along the way. So it, it helps both sides with the freedom aspect and the internet. I love that. I can't wait to dive into some of, uh, more of those details. Um, you know, before we uh, kind of get into the, the nature of the, the problem that, that folks face in the, the fitness uh, side of the equation, I wonder if you could share with us if you have a defining moment maybe that has put you on this path, uh, you know, towards fitness or coaching or whatever it is. Is there anything that stands out in your mind? <laughs> um, I, I guess there's a lot, but I mean, I guess the number one thing that I could really tie it into is my main reason that I moved to Mexico in the first place. And the main reason was, I, you know, I used to be a, a federal law enforcement officer. I used to work in federal corrections. So I used to work in prisons for about five years, just going in there, doing that day in and day out. And I realized that you sit there and I was asking myself, like, isn't there something more that I can do with myself? That, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm only, granted, I mean, I joined the prison when I was 21. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, before then I was in the military and I was in Iraq. So I mean, a lot, there's a lot of build up to that, but you know, 25, I don't know, for some reason, 24, 25, I started really questioning like, what am I really doing? You know? And I think that's what a lot of people ask themselves. And so I was really fortunate and grateful enough that I could, I was at, young enough, I guess. And at the point where I was just like, you know what, let's just go do it. Why not? And I'd say that would be the, the, the finding moment right there. I love it. Well, kudos to you, even at that young age for having that itch of what am I doing? You know, what, what's happening? Is this really what I want? Uh, often that, that takes uh, some of us, you know, longer to get there. So kudos to you for uh, overachieving in that department. Uh, did you always have this uh, bend towards um, fitness? And obviously with military, they probably kept you in shape and maybe the prison uh, stuff kept you in shape. But was it a natural thing for you? Well, see, I, I, not at all. You know, I mean, honestly, like I grew up, I didn't really do any fitness type. I didn't really do any sports. I mean, my parents were divorced. You know, I mean, I, one parent worked all the time and another one really didn't know anything. He didn't know how to cook and stuff. So it wasn't like I was even raised with, hey, this is how we exercise. Hey, this is how we eat properly. No, it was none of that. You know, it was either the chicken pot pie in the freezer, microwave, or, you know, let's stop at Sonic or McDonald's and get some food real quick. That yeah. was how I grew up. Um, you know, I, I always grew up husky section, growing up overweight, you know, having the self-esteem and self-confidence issues, you know, I mean, crazy thing is I was even kicked out of high school in ninth grade. So, I mean, I had a lot of things working against me and then going in the military, you know, realizing even then it was more of, 
this is what you do. You don't know why, you know, you're just running and you're just doing push-ups and you're eating whatever they give you. You really don't know the benefits of nutrition. You don't really know the benefits of exercise. And so even as a soldier, I really didn't even like how I looked, you know, it was more of that, what they call skinny fat, I guess you could say. I mean, it was really no, no muscle, no definition, but it, you were quote unquote fit to the army standard. And that's all you tried for, you know, your push-ups, your sit-ups, and you go run two miles and that was it. And I, I didn't really see that as fitness either. So it, no, it's been a really a winding, weaving road to really get into what I really enjoy and find out what I love. And I think that's what's helped me help so many others. Boy, it definitely is a, a nice basis uh, for a lot of people to identify with, right? This idea that, you know, this wasn't burned into your DNA early and often. It was something you actually had to overcome and deal with and, and uh, kind of probably educate yourself and, and then put the, the process into place. Uh, well, this is very, very interesting to me. So uh, before we dive awesome. in any further, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back to talk about kind of the common problem that that folks find themselves into where you can help them. And we'll do that right after this. Catalyst 88 was developed to help entrepreneurs achieve their short and long-term goals in e-commerce markets by utilizing the power of shared entrepreneurial wisdom. Entrepreneurship is nothing if not lessons to be learned. Learn from others. Learn from us. I guarantee that we will learn from you. Visit Catalyst88.com because your success is our success. A giddy up. Hey, guess what? We're back, everybody, and uh, we're here with Jay Cowley, and he's talking to us about some of the things that he's passionate about, which include uh, fitness and, and kind of getting your ducks in a row when it comes to being healthy, and that's certainly an area all of us, especially busy entrepreneurs, can pay special attention to. So, Jay, can you help us with kind of frame up the common problem that people find themselves in? Maybe a, your, your mm -hmm. generic, typical client. How, how does that uh, mm -hmm. come about? How do they bring the problem to you? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of problems that I combat, right? I mean, we have everything from time to direction to guidance. I mean, I see a lot of people just stumble and struggle because they do all the right things or what they feel are the right things, but then they never reach their goal. And, you know, and then eventually, I mean, how long do you keep doing the same thing over and over before you eventually give up because you stop seeing results? So, I, I mean, I don't know. How about this? How about I pose it to you? What would be one issue that you normally have with fitness and let's say health and exercise that maybe I can help you and maybe that could help other members in your audience? How about that? Sure, sure. No problem. Put, so put me on the spot, Steve. I love it. Yeah, no problem. One of the one of the things that I think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially and awesomers in general, when they are traveling, they find it more difficult to stay on any sort of reasonable eating regimen, right? Uh, there's there's the travel time, there's the, the crappy airline food, there's you know maybe you're in a foreign place, you don't really know what to eat. How does one kind of stay in a, a reasonable mindset when it comes to uh, what they put in their body as, as they're on the road? Oh, classic one. Yeah, for sure. I think the, the big one on this is because, you know, you never really know which places you go to, how they cook food, right? I mean, they could be using three sticks of butter back there to cook your, you know, grilled chicken Caesar salad or whatever, right? I mean, we really don't know. So the good thing is, is first off, I would say, don't give up, right? Don't just go back and revert back to your, your old habits of, well, you, whatever, I'm on vacation or whatever, I'm traveling, I'm just going to eat whatever. That would probably be rule number one, because that's, I think that's how, what we do, you know, like, oh, well, I'm in Italy again. I'm, I, I, I just love the pasta here. So I'm just going to eat this pasta and, you know, who cares? I, I'll just blame it on me being in Italy. Well, it can kind of work that way, or you can kind of take the steps to, to you know, prevent that, right? So a big thing is I actually just got back from a trip in Europe not too long ago. So I kind of understand the, the troubles and the problems of that, that space. A big thing that I did was I really focused on the first meal of the day for breakfast. And I usually would go to the supermarket because, I mean, every place has eggs. Eggs are really easy, really easy to cook. And you can usually wake up in a decent amount of time and cook them pretty, fairly decent. So usually what I would do is really easy depending on where you're staying at and what you have, right? If you have the stove to cook, I would definitely cook eggs, maybe some vegetables, and that's just a great way to start the day. And as long as you're starting the day, it's usually other meals kind of fall into place, and it's a great way to start instead of just, you know, like the typical Italian breakfast of two pieces of sweet bread and espresso. <laughs> that does sound delicious, but uh, eggs are also quite good. And so even if, let's say you're in a hotel, uh, boiled eggs should be sufficient uh, oh. substitution, yes? And, and, and actually, I love boiled eggs because they're usually one of my two go snacks. 
So if you have like a little, you know, like a little Ziploc baggie or something like that that you can take with you because, you know, you don't want to smell in your, in your purse, in your bag, right? So you want to make sure that, you know, keep them nice and fresh. And no, that's usually one of my go-tos because you got to think every egg has about, you know, depending on the size, about six to eight grams of protein per egg. So, I mean, it's a really nice source of protein to get in there. So, you no, know, eggs are classic. I love it. And you've unearthed one of my, my core rules and core philosophies. And that is if I'm putting eggs in my purse, they will be in some sort of wrapped uh, saran wraps. That's, that's a golden rule. Just uh, <laughs> if I can write that one down. Uh, so, so as, as we kind of then the uh, a next common problem outside of the travel, which, which I hear you saying, you know, try to st- try to think of it and stay in a regiment of eating and starting out right is the, the key part of that day. For sure. Oh, oh, and I can even expand. Sorry, Steve, please. I don't want to oh, interrupt no, no. you. That's um, quite right. You know, I would even expand on that, too. So whenever you go to a restaurant, same thing. You know, just kind of stick to, you know, I really like sticking with basics. I really don't like super hard, strict diets. So, I mean, if you're telling me that you're keto or one of these other, like Atkins, remember the Atkins diet, you know? So, I mean, it's kind of similar, right? Or even paleo. If you're telling me that you go to Italy and you can't have bread and pasta, Mm, you're gonna you're gonna break that diet right i mean come on let's be honest so you have to figure out something what's maintainable what can i do and so that's how i would also look at that mindset whenever you go into having lunch and dinner you know you want a good protein source we already talked about that with the eggs so you know you're looking for a good protein source and usually some good vegetables so if you really shoot for that and even some pasta some pasta on the side is not bad but you know we're not having cereal for breakfast pasta at lunch and some spaghetti at dinner. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to be just kind of mindful. And I think that's the biggest thing. Even though you're on vacation, even though you're traveling, be mindful. Stick to your proteins, stick to your vegetables, and then sub- and then add a little bit of, you know, your carbohydrates throughout, their, throughout your trip. And how do you feel about the, the travel and the exercise? Uh, you know, I've been to some hotels that are like um, – they're mausoleums of uh, fitness. I mean, you go to these Vegas hotels and it's like a, it's like a whole new hotel for just gym equipment. It's, a, it's yeah. extraordinary. And then you go to other you know, hotels, a, a, you know, Courtyard by Marriott style, and there's like, a, hey, there's one treadmill over there in the corner and there's a lot of dust around it, a lot of spiders. <laughs> and uh, they might also have a, you know, a rowing machine that has only one oar. Uh, what, what's your recommend as people travel? How do they, they uh, stay in shape from an uh, exercise point of view? Ooh, I mean, well, I mean, I honestly, that's an easy pitch for me, right? So I say the first one is would get a good coach. If you have a good online coach, which is another reason that people get coaches, right? Is because they travel. So either they're too busy or they travel and things like that. There's a reason they have that coach, right? So I say that's the first one. And if they're a good coach, right? If they if they know what they're doing, they're gonna they're going to change your workout for you. You know, so I have students that travel all the time. I have students, you know, busy 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 business executives and things like that who are, you know traveling here and there and stuff like. They can't take everything. They're not going to the gym. They're not even leaving their hotel room usually. So it's okay. Well, what can we do? How can I modify that training session for them? Other than that, I would say go stick, once again, stick back to your basics. So if you know you're going to a gym that really doesn't have anything, you know you can get on the treadmill or go walk around. You know, do just basic walking if you don't do anything else or even incorporate some sort of body weight exercise. As long as, once again, stay in that habit of doing something even just walking for that three days or four days of traveling will really, really work to your benefit. Yeah, I definitely would echo that, that walking in particular can be uh, effective. And, you know, it, particularly in Europe, uh, you know, I remember going to Rome and I had the little Apple Watch or whatever telling me my, uh, my walking for the day. But, you know, one of the days I walked 16 miles just from point to point, walking around all those little uh, um, – you know, beautiful sights and, and so forth. So it, it, for me, that's, that's definitely something I enjoy. So if I summarize the problem, uh, or at least where I see one of the symptoms of the problem is the lack of accountability, right? As, as a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and we're, you know, the, our own CEOs, uh, galactic commanders of the universe, whatever title we've given ourselves, but we don't really have the accountability on this. So a coach is what helps add that accountability. Is that what you're saying? Accountability, or I mean, and, and I hate to say it, it, it would just be set of priorities. You know, where where is it placed at? If you make it where it's the you know an absolute like you know what this is going to get done, then it's going to be that way. If you look at your health and your fitness with, for exercise as you know any appointment that you set with anybody else, you know, what I'm saying you know if that appointment is to make you a million dollar, you know, your million dollar contract right there, how how much how likely are you going to show up to it? If you look at, oh, man, I have to go work out today because it's supposed to be good for me, how likely are you going to go do it? So it depends on how you, you know, how do you set that priority? 
for me, it's one of those first things that I do. I, I, you know, I get out of bed, sip on some coffee real quick, and I go walk my dog. And that's almost like my warm up, my lead up into my workout. And then I do a workout, and it doesn't have to be long. That's the other thing. We always think, like, oh, I gotta go and do this hour. No, even if you do something for 10, 20, 30 minutes, like strength training, for example. It's been proven if you just do 11 minutes of strength training exercises, you get benefit for 24 to 48 hours of that. Mm. So even if you just do 11 minutes, man, that's, that's something, you know, that's better than nothing, you know? Uh, I definitely, uh, I like that idea. And I think uh, a lot of us love the, the concept of being able to, to do something where there's a tangible feel to it. You know, where they, you've talked about this, this effect of 28 to 48 or 24 to 48 hours. So when you do strength training for whatever length of time, whether it's 10 minutes or a half an hour, what, what are these lasting effects that happen? What happens to the body when you, when you do that strength training? Well, that specific one that we're talking about is actually boosting your metabolism. So it's been proven that it's going to boost it for at least 24, if not 48 hours. Now, the crazy thing about that. And the funny thing is, is for most people, when they think of exercise and working out, they think of running or sometimes walking, cardiovascular exercise. The only time in cardiovascular exercise that your metabolism is boosted is during that time that you're doing that exercise. So that's the, one of the biggest differences that a lot of people don't know with the cardiovascular system when it comes to aerobic and anaerobic. So anaerobic comes from more of your strength training, your burst and things like that type of training compared to your steady state walking or running, which is two totally different body mechanics, mechanisms. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I definitely, I, I'm sure that I'm not the only one who's not uh, well versed in this category. Uh, when, when you have a, a client come to you and they say, you know, uh, I'm, I'm ready, I've, I've made the priority, as you <clears throat> alluded to early, they have to make it a priority. For sure. What is, what is a typical coaching uh, regiment look like? Is this something they, you know, they're on the call with you four times a day. I'm looking at a, a cheesecake. Uh, what do I do? Or, you know, how does it work? You, you mentioned an app. I'm, I'm curious how that all works together. Well, and I mean, I, I think that's probably one of the more difficult things, honestly, Steve. I mean, because, you know, we all do, when it comes to online coaching and online training, I mean, every coach is different, you know, and every, every trainer is different. You know, I think that's one of the, the negative concepts that we have also as being, let's say, entrepreneurs or business owners is, what, do your, what does your client think of you when they hear your name? Or what do they think of when they hear your profession? So when they tell you, well, I'm a personal trainer, what comes to your mind? Because it comes to your mind, that thing, oh, that dude, he's just, you know, the guy who leans against the wall, who checks his phone all day, who doesn't really care about me. That doesn't really help me, you know? So, so that'd be the first. I, I'm not like everybody when it comes to how I train. So some people do have you, you know, where you're checking in four times a day and doing all these things. Other people where it says, okay, well, I'm going to meet you at a certain time and watch you like on something like we're doing. So you'd be working out while I watch you, but no, you're doing good. Okay. Yeah. No, do this, do that. That's another way. Once again, I like my students because I mean, I like to be there. I like to go with it done with you, not done for you. Right. So I'm not going to be your cheerleader. I'm not going to be holding you hand by hand, but I'm going to be with you every step of the way. So I, I think that builds a, a level of autonomy, right? My goal is to make you where you're no longer dependent on me, which you probably don't hear very many coaches say that, right? But because most coaches, they're thinking, well, the longer I can keep you, the more money I can make. Not me. That doesn't benefit me. I'd rather teach you everything I know, let you go on, and let you go inspire and teach other people, not keep you dependent on me where I keep all my secrets. So, yeah, I, absolutely. Because well, what is this going to do if I hold all my secrets? You know, for my students, my students are helping their mothers. You know, I'm talking about their 80-year-old mothers who, you know, who are bedridden. My mothers, my students are helping their kids teach them what proper nutrition is. You know what I'm saying? My, my students are helping generations. They wouldn't be able to do that if they're only dependent on me when they seen Jay for his one hour a day. Yeah. No, that's quite right. Very interesting and quite yeah. inspiring. Um, uh, one of the things that I noticed with the, the CaliCoaching.com website is that your, your tagline is creating lifestyles for women. I, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm, that's actually what I really love doing because I think that's what, whenever you think about most fitness programs is they're in and they're out. You know, oh, it's just another eight week program or it's just this or okay, you're gonna, you know, everything works for a limited amount of time. But most of my students wanna create a lifestyle. You know, they wanna figure out how to make fitness work for them. So you came to me and said, what would a normal student come to you and what would they look for? Well, it really comes and depends on the student, which I think we hate hearing that because we want just the one answer. Let me just do this and I'm done. Well, it really depends. What's your schedule like? 
If you're working 90 hours a week, look, I'm not gonna get you in the gym five days out of the week. It's just not gonna be possible. So what can we do? How can I get you into workouts? So first off, it's gonna be really dependent. But the thing is, is once you learn how to incorporate strength training, how to incorporate cardiovascular, how to incorporate your nutrition, then guess what? Regardless of the issues that come along from now or in 20 years, you know how to handle them. I got you. So I do think that's an important mindset shift for people that this is not, um, you actually had a word on, somewhere on your website, but uh, a get skinny quick scheme or something mm -hmm. like that. Was that, mm -hmm. I don't want to misquote you, but, but it, it resonated because there's so many people out there with the get rich quick schemes uh, and the get skinny quick schemes are just as prevalent, perhaps more prevalent these days. And it, it, those schemes aren't going to work long-term, even if there's a, a short-term benefit. It's, it's only when we change uh, the lifestyle. It's only when we uh, adapt and, and really modify uh, kind of the inputs. So when, regardless of how they, I understand you're saying there's lots of different variations and, and lots of yep. different uh, things, but everybody kind of, uh, not everybody, but many people would say, hey, you know, I want to feel healthier. I want to have more energy. Maybe I want to lose some weight. There, there's some common themes in there somewhere. Yes. And, uh, how how oh. do they, yeah, how do they start going about <laughs> fixing the, whatever, whatever the core problems are there? Um, you know, uh, is there a top one or two things that people kind of start with? Oh, well, I mean, honestly, I think you hit the nail on the head, honestly. And I think it, the funny thing is, is you brought up the, the get skinny quick scheme is very similar to the get rich quick scheme. Well, you know, also another thing that I do is I think that you can think and be fit just Ooh. like you can think and be rich. I like so, that. Yeah, I, I think it all starts here. That's number one. Because if, if I can get you to know that it's possible, if I can get you to know that your goal is possible, that you can, which, that you can achieve it, we will achieve it. But to get people over that step is not the same. You know? And so you have to break it down where it's able to, where they can incorporate in their lives and figure out how to do it. But I think you know, just basic is just knowing, okay, I'm going to make this change. I'm going to set the time to do it. And even starting off by just setting the time and waking up in the morning and going for your 20 or 30 minute walk and watching the sunrise, that is leading you to that success. And once you get comfortable doing that and your results stop coming from that, because guess what? You're going to see results from just doing that. If you haven't done anything, if you just do that, you're going to start seeing results. If you just start doing that, drink some more water and sleep a little bit longer, I'm going to, start, I'm going to tell you, you'll start seeing results. Yeah, After I that, then, you know, then we can talk because let's get the basics down. And that's your number one thing. So that, that commitment to some sort of routine, whatever it is, is the beginning, it sounds like. Uh, and I, I do think that, uh, you know, again, it has to be, you know, your lifestyle is going to shift, but first your mind has to shift, right? You have to decide it's a priority. Uh, we're going to take one more quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the premise that, you know, not everyone uh, thinks that they're, they should put themselves first. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm going to give my opinion. I, I, I'd love to hear Jay's opinion about this. And we're going to do that right after the break. Empowering. The name says it all. Connecting e-commerce entrepreneurs with great people, ideas, systems, and the services needed to stay business dynamic and to grow. Empowery is a network, a cooperative venture of tools and resources to make you better at what you do. Because we love what you do. We are you. Visit Empowery.com to learn more. Okay, everybody, we're back again. Steve Simonson here, joined by Jay Callie, and we're talking about uh, kind of fitness and wellness, perhaps, uh, as a, a more, you know, comprehensive term. And, and you know, I, when I teased the break, I talked about this idea that people don't put themselves first, because we, we want to carry around the big, the big rock on our shoulders and go, hey, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm a real hard worker, and uh, it's probably a lot of ego tied into, to be honest. Uh, but what, what's your thoughts when people Appreciate are saying, Hey, I'm so busy. I don't have time to, to put myself, uh, first or, or at least even on the list. What, what's your thoughts, Jay? Oh, well, I mean, you know, the, the funny thing is I always allude this back to my students also. And I ask them, okay, well, you know, we all travel. We're always constantly going through things, right? So you've been on a plane, right? Sure. For sure. So you get on a plane and you hear the emergency announcement. Sure. You're probably listening to your iPhone or whatever, but what do they normally say on the, on the announcement? In the case of emergency, the mask is gonna drop. Yeah, put the mask on the, uh, yourself first and then the other person second. Why is that? Uh, well, presumably, if you can't help yourself and you're not conscious, you can't help anybody else. Thank you. 
bottom line. There's no, there's no, there's nothing else. You know, I mean, come on, that's an airline telling you. And I know it might sound basic, but w- just tell me, tell me what happens in your world when you put your mask on first. And it sounds crazy because, like you said, and we talked about this a little bit before about the time paradox, right? Because I just don't have no time. I just don't have no time. And for some reason, I don't know why it is, but it's something I call the time paradox. And whenever you set that time for yourself, even if it's just the 20 or 30 minutes in the morning, I don't know what happens Steve. Honestly, it's like everything else just starts to fall into place. I don't know if you start learning better time management skills or if you just start making it a priority, but you're like, nope, this has to go here, this goes here, this goes, boom. And now you have time for yourself and you end up having more time for your kids and your loved ones more. I don't know how it works, Steve. I have no clue. I just know that it happens over and over, but you have to put yourself first. You have to show it. You have to put the actions in there and it will come. I do think, I I do like, first of all, that term uh, time paradox because it is um, in many ways inexplicable how you can, you know, stop, carve out more time for yourself, get your house in order, your own mental house, your own physical house, whatever it is. And then, you know, magically there's uh, abundance. There's more of you to go around. Uh, And a lot of it I think has to do with all of the time that we waste either being stressed out or just kind of like, oh, I got, you know, a 45 minutes for a break and you just kind of vegetate right there because you just, you just want a break. Whereas yeah. there, there's more productivity uh, coming when you still feel, you know, up to more tasks or you're excited to, to carry on to the next thing. So I, I do like that, the, the time paradox, uh, that's a good one. And I, I do want to just, you know, focus on this, this concept of if we don't put ourselves first, and I talk about this in the, the context of establishing your personal why. Mm. You know, your personal why, a lot of people like to start out with this idea that, you know, well, I'm here to serve the world and, and this and that. And that's great. That could be a part of it. But if you don't first get yourself in order and the book, uh, The Miracle Morning has been a, mm. uh, a book that a lot of people talk about. And yep. that, that just establishes kind of a little regiment of things to do every morning. And uh, believe it or not, uh, as simple as some of those things are, it's 10 minutes of this, 10 minutes of that, you know, uh, right down to the, uh, I think they, they carve out an hour each day. Yep. It's, it's just so simple and easy to replicate, but has a big impact on people. Is that Huge. Uh, similar to your experience? Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, I've read that book. I really enjoy that book, but, you know, let's be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pressed for time too. And as much as I like that book, you know, there's certain things that I used to do, let's say like affirmations and writing gratitude and there's a lot of great things that you can do, but I also learned that I like to stack things. I like to stack activities. So like that walk in the morning, and this is actually something I was going to allude to in the last piece is, you know, that walk in the morning, I also use that to do a couple things. Either I can listen to audiobooks, personal development seminars, or usually I listen to some sort of affirmations. You know, my, one of my mentors told me about an app called Think Up is what they call it. Like think like your brain and then up. And all it is is you actually record affirmations you put your headphones in and it actually repeats them back to you. So you don't have to stand in that mirror holding your hands up and, and saying them yourself. You're actually saying them yourself to your brain. So it's actually kind of cool. So whenever you can stack things like that, stack your affirmation, stack your walking, stack your exercise, stack your dog walking. You know what I'm saying? Like all those things kind of help is saving you time also. Boy, I really love the idea of outsourcing affirmations to myself. Uh, <laughs> this is a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, I, I, you know, all of these types of things, you know, they, they contribute to your mental wellness, right? And Mm -hmm. the mental wellness must be accompanied by physical wellness. Otherwise, what's the point, right? I I think the book four hour work week talked about it, you know, if they eat each other, they eat each other without without physical, what's the point? Well, yeah. I mean, and the crazy thing is, is if you know that they feed each other, like, man, I can, I can break down some crazy weird numbers for you, right? Like the funny thing is, is like, you're talking about the energy earlier, like sometimes like, or even vegging out, you know, what's this vegging out? You know, like the thing is, is how quick can you get back on it? You know, if I have a sales call that goes bad, how long am I going to beat myself up before the next sales call I have? Am I going to beat myself up for the next six hours? Man, I've done lost some sales calls. Am I going to beat myself up for one minute? You know, so how fast do you quote unquote get back on that horse? But same thing with this energy, man, I'm pumped all day long, man. I work out in the morning. I'm done. Like I'm ready. Like whatever comes on, look, I've done the, I done did the hardest thing in my day. What, what else you got day? I done did the hardest thing. What else? Cause nothing else is going to stand in my way. And so I think just bringing that energy and you realize, I mean, it's been proven 
exercise boosts your energy, exercise boosts all these things, boosts good feelings. It comes through, it comes through on your calls, it comes through in how your interactions and it comes through on your business 100%. So let's talk about your solution. Um, uh, you know, as people, uh, and it seems to me that your, your key target market is oriented towards women. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I, I, for some reason, I love working with women. Yeah. They just get the best fair. results. I don't know. They, they, you know, they, they do the work, as I, I say. say. They're probably more committed. I'll be honest. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, so, yes, women are smarter, more motivated often than men. So, uh, as, you, as you are, um, you know, working on the, the Cali coaching solution, when, when a new client comes to you, how do you describe the, the, you know, your, your solution to them? Hmm. Oh, that's a good question, Steve. How do I describe my solution for them? Usually I'll start off by asking them, you know, trying to get them to understand if it's if, what they're looking for, right? So I'll ask them, like, do you know whenever a woman, you know, as she gets a little bit older, she has to, maybe she had a couple kids, she realizes her health is really her number one priority. And so she tries to start getting healthy again, but... It's just so freaking difficult, you know? So when it's so hard, then she just ends up giving up. I mean, her motivation is high. She wants to do it, but she's running here and there and all over the place. Her energy is zapped, you know what I'm saying? Her confidence is low, and it's hard for her to get started. Do you know someone like that? Of course, yeah. Who doesn't? Absolutely. So usually and then from that point, then it, I say, you know, well, this is what I do. And how I do it is I help your mindset, number one, because if I can get you to believe that you can do it, then we can achieve it. From then, then we start talking about nutrition because a lot of people make this nutrition super, super difficult, but it really is, we can make it easier. And is, if we made it simpler, something that you can do at home that's quick and easy, that the whole family will love, then it's gonna be easily more adaptable to your life and implementable into your life. And finally, you know, the workouts. I don't know, we're all busy, but I don't know anyone busier than a mom or most women, especially if they're working a full-time job or trying to start their own business. So if you know that you can get the workouts that I'm talking about, if you can get results in 11, 20, 30 minutes a day compared to spending an hour and a half in a gym. That's a pretty good ROI on time. Exactly. So why not get those results? Because, you know, I believe that you can train smarter than training longer or training harder. Because like I said, I think you can think and be fit. So why not just shorten the process? I love a good Napoleon Hill reference, everybody. And uh, the, the book Think and Grow Rich, uh, I think, is uh, this uh, another clever reference point by Jay, uh, tying into existing paradigms like the get rich quick, it's get skinny quick. That's uh, very clever marketing. Uh, you, how did you learn the marketing piece of this, Jay? I'm curious. Oh, um, man. You know, just uh, really helped from good mentors, been around. Like I said, it, it was a really, to be honest, it was the, one of the most difficult transitions for me moving from a brick and mortar gym to an online world. I mean, first off, I gotta sell a dream anyway. If I'm selling it to you face to face, it's a little bit more different, but if I'm selling it to you on a phone or virtual, it takes a little bit of a, a learning process. And so that's, it, it's, been, it's been a good learning experience. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, no doubt it's always learning, uh, but I, I think it's a really, it's a nice evolution. It's a classic awesomer story to be able to pivot, right? And go, hey, hmm. this gym thing didn't work out. And you said, well, you know, it uh, sounds like with the advice of your girlfriend, hey, what about the online piece? How do I piece this together and still maintain my own lifestyle of uh, independent, you know, uh, location independence, right? It doesn't exactly. matter where you are. If you're traveling, you probably still can carry on with your coaching, right? Absolutely. And that was the great thing, you know, like you said, I mean, and, and that was also another great thing coming from the brick and mortar aspect of, man, I was in there 530 in the morning, open the thing up and I had to be there at 10 o'clock, 1030, cleaning and closing the thing down at night. And sure, I mean, you know, you could have hired help and stuff like that, but I'm still there. I'm still responsible for it. So it, I, it's still my baby. And that's what you come to, to find out with businesses that, you know, they start being your baby. And so whenever I could be able to say, okay, how can I have my time to make this work also? And that was a real, like you said, a real big pivot that was really, you know, game changing. So now I'm able to, you know, travel Europe for, you know, three months at a time and my business is staying good. Everything's maintaining, you know, everything's on point and nobody misses me. And so it's awesome. Uh, that's really, uh, I, again, I think that's part of kind of what I describe as the awesomer lifestyle where you can choose, you have your, the, the freedom to choose what you want to do, right? Where you want to be, who you want to be with, uh, and the, the types of things that you want to pursue. So you mentioned an app earlier, and that seems to be a potentially unique part of your solution. How does an app fit into this equation? Oh, the app is, you know, just one of the easier ways. So I have a, I have a couple different 
platforms and a couple different programs. So one program is where it's, you know, almost like your online academy type of system, right? Where you can access it from your phone or you can access it from your computer. But whenever you progress and you go to one-on-one, -on -one, I have an actual app they can download onto their phone that I can give them. That's all, you know, that's in my name and stuff like that. They download on their phone. And that's actually where I build all their customized programming. And so inside that app, the cool thing about it though, is, you know, like your Fitbits and your Apple watches and things like that. Well, all that connects to the app. So all that data, so I see how your sleeping patterns are. I see how you're eating if you choose to log that or whatnot. And I can keep track of all the data points so you don't have to. You know, that's a big thing also, I think, with fitness and exercise. You know, we have all this data of information, but if you don't know how to read it, then it's not any good. Or if you've been doing the same workout for, you know, two, three years, or you're at a plateau for the past six months and you don't know how to break it. So, you, you know, you have to know how to read the data and use the data to your, to your benefit. Boy, we talk about this all the time uh, when it comes to the business principles and uh, balance sheets and income statements, cash flow statements, and, and just understanding financials in general. But it really is uh, apropos and quite consistent with this idea that, you know, fitness data is also just data until it becomes information, right? And so I love the idea that you can help, uh, you know, articulate what it actually means. Uh, you know, a lot of us look at those things and like, well, that's more steps than yesterday. I don't know. Yep. You know, yep. I salute exactly. myself. I, I, I got nothing else to go with. But or what does my resting heart rate mean? Or what does why am I spiking here? Or why does you know what I'm saying like you know because you have a lot of different people. Like whenever they start really tracking that stuff too, they realize, whoa, okay. I for some reason when I'm normally walking, I'm let's say 60, 70 beats per minute. But even when I start walking, I jump up to 150. I don't have no, you know, you start realizing things about yourself and you're like, man, this doesn't, that doesn't seem right. Or is that right? And now you can kind of ask somebody and they can kind of help you. But if you don't know, you know, it's like the old saying, like, but you don't track, you can't measure, right? If you don't track, you can't measure it. And if you can't measure it, you're never going to know. And that's what we don't do most of the time. We don't track our stuff. I do love that. Uh, we use uh, a very similar quotation, uh, I believe uh, emanated from the great Tom Peters, uh, you know, no score, no game. And, uh, you know, what gets measured gets managed. And so I just love the idea that you have this uh, mechanism, an app or otherwise, to be able to uh, put in data and then help interpret that. Oh, dude, and it's lovely. My students love it too, because once again, it gives them something that they know what they're shooting for. And everything's graphed. So, you know, their weights, we can see their progress, we can see how it's dropping, we can see how, you know, their, their, their waist is getting smaller, their legs are getting stronger and tighter. You, you, you're, you're tracking all this. And whenever you see that, that's what also boosts the motivation too. You know, some people are they're only looking at one measurement. What's my number on the scale? You know what, if I, if I only took your car to your mechanic and we just measured your tire pressure and said, okay, your car is good, have a good day. <laughs> You'd be like, whoa, 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 hold on, man. You didn't even check the oil. You didn't even check the, you didn't check anything. You just checked one thing. Well, that's like checking your weight and asking what my health is, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Again, a very, uh, very smart marketing comparison. However you learn marketing, it's, uh, it's a uh, well, lesson well learned, I would say. Uh, Thanks, so, Jay, when, when people, they've now listened to us, we've been uh, talking about this, and maybe they're even motivated to, to take some action. What would you tell them to do? What, what's the first thing they should do, you know, after hearing this conversation? I would say drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I'll, I'll take that. Um, I would say after you drink the water, perhaps even stacking the water, uh, if, you, if you run over to, to the CaliCoaching.com website, oh, okay. um, well, I know you have a, little, a blog a over there. Pitch. How about this? How about, I'm going to do something special for your listeners. Tell How about us. that, Steve? Is that cool? I, okay. I like it, yeah. Well, I have an Amazon best-selling book. It actually hit number one in about four different categories. I love it. I, I'd say wow. it's going to be the last – fitness, nutrition, and motivational book that you'll ever need, in my opinion. Now, you know, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, but I want to give it to your listeners for free. How about that? I mean, this, this is a $10 book on Amazon. This is a, a $5 book on Audible right now. But if you go to this website that I'm about to tell you, you can get it shipped to you. It's free plus shipping, or you can download it digitally right now. So your choice, right? But go to Kali Coaching, K A L I. C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G dot com, Kali Coaching, and then forward slash secret gift, S-E-C, or secret, yeah, S-E-C-E-R-T-G-I-F-T, -E secret gift. Whew. All right. So first of all, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for that generous offer. And uh, if I get that right, it's 
Cully coaching. Cully coaching. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, bad news for me, everybody. As uh, we know, I keep a, a score of how many times I mispronounce the guest's name. And uh, I've been doing it all episode, everybody. And thank you uh, uh, for, although not correcting me, uh, it's Jay Cully. Yeah. Not Jay yeah. Kelly, just uh, yeah. in case you were wondering. And yeah. uh, so uh, this only brings my average down, which is not good to begin with. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, but, uh, we got some I, crazy names in the world, so don't feel bad. I do love the, so Cully Coaching, uh, K-A-L-I coaching.com slash secret gift. Gift. Okay, good. I, so I love that. And I, I really do encourage awesomers out there listening to, after you take your, your water, go ahead and why not download a book, you know, or order the book? And I, I like to do both. I like to have the, the digital copy and I like to have the physical copy. Yep. Uh, and a free like shipping offer is a, a beautiful thing. And, you know, at least uh, particularly women out there, you know, at least let's take this opportunity to, you know, learn something. And I'm a big learner. I'm a big fan of learning. And uh, I think everybody can take that time. Uh, you know, give me, pull out your crystal ball just for a minute. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> uh, as I, um, I lament to say, but mine has been in the shop for some time, so I need some help understanding the future. How, yeah. how do you see the evolution of kind of the fitness and the wellness space evolving over the next five years? Oh, man, over the next five years? Yeah. Ooh. Um, oh, let me preface also that gift real quick. Ooh. I want to let you, I want to let your listeners know also that's not one of these like, books that just pushes you to get on a call it's not one of those books this book actually has a year of workouts involved included i mean this book is everything that you will seriously need that I, I i tell you everything in this book i held i pull no punches in this i mean all my people told me i was silly for doing it because you know technically you don't need me but i'm telling you last book you ever need i promise I um, love it. Thank you for that. And by the way, I just I, I love the fact so we have this general philosophy uh uh I think made popular by the great Zig Ziglar where we say, you know, you can have everything you want in your life. If you help enough other people get what they want in your life. I love the pay it forward attitude. And I salute you for doing that. Uh, so, no. Yeah. When there's 150,000 different books for fitness right there. And, and most of them are just half information just to get you to buy something. I, I'm not cool with that. You know? And I mean, that's, I don't know. That's just me, man. I have integrity, man. Like I said, I was in the military for too long or something. I don't know, but I'm just too, I can't, I can't do that, man. No. Definitely works for the awesomers out there. Thank you again. Uh, now about that crystal ball, let's, yeah, let's think ball. about that future. Yeah. Tell, tell hey. us what it looks like. And I, we assume that everything you say is going to be accurate. So go. I hope so. I hope so. If, if there was a crystal ball and if it was, if I'm looking into the future, if, if it was up to me, I would say very, very soon, if we think of exponential growth and things like that, I can see it very possible being in some sort of Google glasses or some sort of, um, augmented reality where you actually have a trainer with you. So every time you're working out or anything like that, so you have your glasses on and your coach is there and somehow we're using AI or some sort of whatever that they can correct you when you're squatting wrong. And the machine knows your biomechanics, the machine. And so you just have the coach as the figurine technically there. And maybe you can, you know, buy different coaches, right? You can have your basic coach, you know, that comes with it, or you can upgrade coaches I, I think i don't know if it's i don't know how but i feel that we're going to move to the more augmented slash virtual reality even even while exercising so you're going to see guys in the gym with things on exercising going, okay this is how i curl or this is how i squat i think so i love it i haven't considered that but it does sound very interesting and not unlike the old uh gps's that we used to buy as separate units where you could pick the different voices uh yep. the, the idea of picking a different trainer uh that's a fascinating uh, concept of evolution. So uh, thank you for that. That's a good yeah. one. I'm going to try. Uh, I don't know. That, that's a big reason why I got into online. Because I think that that's the next, like my idea is, okay, well, if I'm just a normal coach and trainer, because I could have got out of the brick and mortar and just became a normal personal trainer or opened another brick and mortar gym. But my thing is like you're saying, I'm trying to think of future. And where's the future? Well, if the future right now is online coaching, the next viable step is, is virtual or augmented. But if I'm still a normal personal trainer back here sitting in the gym, how much harder of a jump is that going to be for me? And so if this is just the middle ground, then cool, I'll hang out in the middle ground, but I think, there, I think it's coming. Ah, I love it. That's, uh, well, you heard it uh, here first, Awesomers. Uh, the, uh, the world is going to be virtualized uh, in one day. I, I did watch that movie, um, Ready Player One, recently. Oh. There's a whole world of augmented reality, and, and people walking around with the, the glasses. It's quite an entertaining movie. 
And, uh, and uh, you know, my kids and I, who we like to play the video games from time to time, it was a very intriguing concept, this, this whole idea. So I think that VR and augmented reality, uh, high, high usage, and particularly fitness, why not? Uh, I That's what that. I'm saying. Why not? You know? Good idea. Well, listen, Jay, it's, uh, did I get Jay right? Did I pronounce that? Yeah, one? yeah. no, it's perfect. Very right. smooth. Like my, my middle name is also Jay, so you'd think I'd have a, an inside track on that one. I, I really do appreciate you coming on and sharing your, your time with us today and, and giving to the, uh, the world out there as you do. So thank you for all of that. It was a pleasure, Steve. Thank you for and having me. I, I definitely uh, hope awesomers out there listening will uh, take a moment, take some action. You know, you know, mental wellness, physical wellness, it all goes hand in hand. And you will get more out of your life if you get those ducks in a row in my opinion, uh, for sure. So Awesomers, we'll be right back after this. Hey, Amazon Marketplace professionals, congratulations on your success to date. Your creativity, strategic vision, problem solving, and discipline have allowed you to build your own e-commerce business. Wouldn't it be great if you had more time to focus on the things that truly drive the sales and growth of your company? Instead of getting lost in a dozen different services and countless spreadsheets, what if there was one system that connected to your Amazon account and automatically gave you the information that you needed to make great decisions and really impact your business? Parsimony ERP can do that. Parsimony is the business operating system for your marketplace business. With Parsimony, you get true double entry bookkeeping, easy financial statements, full customer service tools, and item by item profitability, along with project and task management, and more features are being added all the time. Learn more at parsimony.com. That's parsimony, P A R S I M O N Y.com. Parsimony.com. We've got that. Well, Jay just offered a lot of value there, and he really delivers, you know, such great sage wisdom and advice. And the fact that he's offered kind of his free uh, bonus uh, for the listeners of this episode is that much more interesting. I really do think that, you know, as entrepreneurs, we often put our, our own health and wellness on the back burner. And this is something that, you know, only by talking about it and shining a little light on it, are we perhaps going to be motivated to do something about it. I really respect Jay and particularly as a, as a young entrepreneur, he's been able to niche down, right? And he's like, hey, I'm focused on women and particularly he wants to help, you know, women over the age of 40, for example. And that is a really, really smart idea because it helps you really target an audience. It helps you talk specifically to them. It's an excellent marketing technique, but more importantly, it's helping such a, a valuable part of our world, right? So this is a, a really cool thing. And I hope that you get out there and you share this with, with the folks around you and women in particular. Let's make sure we get this episode uh, some shares and some likes and some reviews and so forth because Jay really put his heart out there. So again, this has been episode number 47 of the awesomers.com podcast series. And all you have to do is go to awesomers.com slash 47 and you'll be able to find show notes, the transcript, any relevant details, including links that we may have talked about right on that show page. Get on over there and check it out right now. Well, we've done it again, everybody. We have another episode of the Awesomers podcast ready for the world. Thank you for joining us and we hope that you've enjoyed our program today. Now's a good time to take a moment to subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Heck, you could even leave a, a review if you wanted. Awesomers around you will appreciate your help. It's only with your participation and sharing that we'll be able to achieve our goals. Our success is literally in your hands. Thank you again for joining us. We are at your service. Find out more about me, Steve Simonson, our guest, team, and all the other Awesomers involved at awesomers.com. Thank you again. Dot com.